winter here and winter for me means preparation for springtime. So today I brought in my 1986 Gravely 5665 with its 50 inch mower deck on the front. This is a big workhorse for me here on my property and I have not done any maintenance on the mower deck to get it ready for springtime. And I like to do it at this time of the year because if you let all that cut grass sit in the bottom of that mower deck, it will start to rot through the mower deck. Luckily, it's dry enough here where I really don't run into that problem, but I don't want to give it a chance either. I know in other places in the country where it stays humid year round, if that grass stays uh, wet all year round, it will start to rot through and it rusts through on the mower deck. So I like to get it cleaned out get my blade sharpened, get the mower deck all greased, have it ready to go so in the springtime I don't have to mess around with it. So I'll get the mower deck pulled off and we'll get to work on it. So we've got our mower deck up on the sawhorses here and as you can see inside of it, um, it's not as bad as I thought it would be but there is a lot of grass stuck on the bottom here. We want to take and scrape all that out of here. Before I get into that, I will take, I'll pull all three blades off uh, I'll take those over, we'll sharpen those and balance them as well. We'll scrape the bottom of the deck clean, put the blades back in, we'll grease it, we'll flip it back, mount it back on the tractor, we'll be ready to go. So let's take a look at the process that I go through while I do this. So when I go to remove these blades, uh, I use a breaker bar to do it. Uh, it's pretty tough to get these off, they should be pretty snug, pretty tight. Um, I use this wood block here to block the blades. You could hold on to the blade probably, um, maybe grab it with a big pair of channel locks. The first thing that I want to do is take and remove all three of the blades that are here and then we'll take and we'll scrape the grass off. Um, as you can see, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's definitely been far worse, but I still want to get this cleaned up. I don't want this grass sitting under here all winter and I don't want it to hold the moisture in and rust through the deck eventually. So we'll scrape all this out of here. We'll take and sharpen balance the blades and then I'm going to use this block to take and hold the blades while I unscrew the nuts on the bottom here. Okay, so I'm going to put the block in here to hold the blade for me while I loosen this nut here. Like I said, they're on there pretty snug or at least they better be. I just let that block of wood hold it for me and off it comes nice and easy. We'll get the others done here using the block again. Now one thing that I do every year when I take these blades off is I make sure to rotate them. I haven't just pulled them off and thrown them in a pile as you can see. What I do is I always rotate as I sit on the tractor, we always rotate from right to left. So what I will do is this year I will take and move this blade all the way over to the far end. The far end will move to the middle. The middle moves to the outside and next year I keep doing I keep rotating those blades through so it kind of helps with the wear and keeps the wear on them a little more even. My blades are off. Um, I basically use a couple putty knives to scrape the bottom. You can use, I know my dad used to use a big brick chisel that he used. Anything that's going to scrape this, not damage any of the metal but get the grass off is basically what you want to use. Be careful, um, I ripped a lot of knuckles open doing this, so be careful with your hands. Maybe not even a bad idea to wear some gloves if you're going to get crazy doing it. Um, everybody's giving me a hard time because I don't have gloves on today. Well, I'm not working in grease and oil, so I don't mind if the grass gets on my skin. That washes off. I don't have to worry about being poisoned by the grass. That's why I don't have my gloves on today. But if you need to protect your hands from hitting anything like the corners of these blade cradles are sharp, you don't want to catch your knuckles on them, put some gloves on, it won't hurt. So I basically just go through and scrape all this out. You're not going to get down to the bare metal perfectly. Um, I have had people ask me before, 
should I take and, and take it down to the bare metal? Should I make it perfectly clean? My answer to that is I do that about every five years on my machines. What I will do is I will take and scrape this out. I'll take my pressure washer and I will pressure wash the bottom. And the key to that is to take and hit it with some water and keep it moist and let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes. All that grass will soak all that up. Take your pressure washer and then hit it with that and it'll blow all the grass out of there. It should probably bring you down a perfectly clean metal. And then what I'll do, I'll let it dry and I'll take and paint the bottom of the mower deck with um, something like a good Rust-Oleum red that matches the tractor paint. And I'll put a couple coats in there, get a good thick layer in there, let that dry up real good, and that will get you through at least another five years. That Rust-Oleum paint's pretty bulletproof on the bottom here once it dries. Um, that's been very successful for me and what I've done. I've heard of guys that have coated the bottom with cooking spray and WD-40 so the grass doesn't stick. I don't know if that works or not, I've never tried it, but something to go research and find out for yourself. So I'm just going to keep scraping away. As you can see, the stuff comes up pretty easily. They say one of the key parts to not having a lot of grass under your mower deck is to cut your grass when it's dry. When it's wet, as you know, it has a tendency to clump up. It wants to stick on the bottom. Um, I usually cut my grass, unfortunately, first thing in the morning when it is a little more wet. Um, basically because it just gets too hot later in the day and I don't like being out in the hot sun. So I usually scrape my mower decks about two to three times a year, depending on how much the grass is growing, how much I've had to cut it. Um, so it all depends on, on what kind of grass you have. I have very thick grass here, it's very heavy. Uh, if you're cutting a thinner grass with a lot of weeds and stuff, you may not get a lot of buildup. It's something you need to go and basically determine for yourself. Take a look underneath when you think it's too full, take it off and, and take and scrape it clean and sharpen the blades. The biggest thing is having sharp blades. You want to keep your blades sharp um, throughout your season. So that's why, like I said, I'll take and I'll scrape my mower decks and I'll sharpen my blades about two or three times per season just to keep them um, up to 100%. What I'm going to do now is just clean off the rest of the grass that's on the blades. I did take and scrape them off with a putty knife. I do that just to keep the dust down a little bit in the shop. You don't have to do it, you can go right into the wire wheel. But I like to take and strip all of this off because we want to make sure that this blade is balanced after we sharpen it. And I'll go through that when we get to that point, but let's start just by cleaning it up right now. As you can see, I've taken, I've cleaned the blades up with the wire wheel. There's no more grass on them, they're nice and clean now down the bare metal, um, so I don't have to worry about that throwing them out of balance. You can also tell that the blades are still pretty sharp. They're in good shape. Um, I don't have a lot of rocks here. I have very good grass, so my bl blades tend to last me a little bit longer. What I could do is I could take and sharpen this here at the grinder on the, the wheel here. That tends to remove a lot of material, and because my blades are in such good shape, I'm not going to do that. What I've done is I've mounted my blades and my vise here at my uh, workbench. You can just take and use a regular file. It's not going to take that much. I'm a little bit lazier. What I'm going to do to do mine is I got an 80 grit flap disc here on my angle grinder. It's really quick. I'm just going to take and sharpen them up with this real fast. Does a pretty good job. Now I'll just take a file 
I'm gonna go flip the blade over. I'm just gonna run it across the back and just knock off the burr that that might have caused on the top, back side here. There we go, it's nice and sharp. Flip it over. Do the other side. Knock that burr off. It's beautiful. The only other thing left that I am going to do is I need to take and check the balance on this. So what I have here is I have my blade balancer. It's a really simple tool. You can get them at any of your lawn and garden suppliers. This happens to be a plastic one. It's a little cheaper. My dad had one that was aluminum. I really need to get it. But what you want to do with this is put it on a level flat surface, center up your blade on it, and let go of it and see if it goes to one side or the other. It's a little heavy on this side, which means it's ever so slightly out of balance, but not too bad. What I will do is I'll take and sharpen this side up a little bit more, see if I can get it perfectly balanced. So I took and removed a little bit more material off that one side. That's what I like about the flap disc is it just move, removes enough to get it back so that it's in balance again. That blade's perfectly balanced. It will not beat up the bearings in my shaft on the mower deck. So this one will be good to go. Let's work on the next two. As you can see, we scraped it out. It's pretty clean now. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. We just want to get the heavy stuff. Um, make sure that it's as clean as we can get it without going bananas. Um, if you want to take a wire wheel of this and get it even cleaner, that's up to you. Uh, just know that about three passes after you take this out into your yard, it's going to be right back where it was. We just want to get that grass out of there for the winter. I've got my hardware cleaned up. I've got my blades cleaned up, sharpened and balanced. The one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this wire brush real quick and I'm just going to knock off any of the junk that's still hanging on to the end of these tower rolls. Just clean them up, the blade cradles a little bit. There's still a little bit of stuff stuck on here. This grass does stick on here pretty good. All right, now that I've got those cleaned up, I still have my blades in order, by the way. This is the one that was from here. The one in the middle was from the middle here. The bottom one was from over here. So as I said, what I do is I move them from right to left. So the one blade that was here is now gonna land over here. One thing I wanna point out is I'm putting the blades on. Notice how the curvature of the blade goes down toward the bottom of the mower deck here, which is actually up because we have this upside down. So make sure that you're putting your blades on correctly. Do not get your blades put on this way where the curvature is going this way on you. As you can see, uh, that's definitely going to cause your problems. You want to make sure that the blades are flat so that they're going to cut in an even height for you. If you flip them over like this, the wings are going to catch the grass. You're going to end up ripping your grass up. So make sure that you get your blades on the right way. Put my washers on. Put my lock nuts back on. Make sure that you check your lock nuts after years. Lock nuts wear out. They do need to be replaced. I know these lock nuts are all in good condition because I replaced them just a few years ago. Um, they're easy to test if you get down to the point where it's about to poke through on the very end. If it gets hard to turn, that means the locking device and the nuts working. If you can keep screwing it down like a non-lock nut, that means they need to be replaced. Let me get the wrench to tighten these up. I'm gonna bring back my block of wood here. I've gone to a breaker bar. Just putting the block of wood on the opposite side. I'm not really cranking these down super, super tight, but I am making sure that they're snug. I let this block do all the work to hold the blade for me. Let's see, we're almost there. Good to go. 
So we have the mower deck flipped back over. There's one last thing I have to do. It's probably the most important part of this whole process. I need to grease the blade towers. Some of them, they may grease from underneath. You probably have a grease fitting underneath. These, luckily, they took and put them up on top. How often should you grease your mower deck? I get asked all the time. In the owner's manual that I have, it recommends that you do it every eight hours of operation. It takes me about two hours to cut my grass in entirety. I take and I grease my mower deck once a month. So what I'll do is I'll take a rag and I'll just wipe the top of these grease fittings off so that I know they're clean. Here's one underneath here. And I will just take and I'll give them probably a good four or five. I can hear the grease coming out the bottom. That's important to listen to. If you do not have grease fittings on your mower deck, that's unfortunate. It will definitely help the life on these. Um, I don't know if they're putting them on the new ones. They probably have stopped taking them off, putting them on to save some money. But hopefully you have them. If you have them, make sure they get greased regularly. This one's a little more tricky to get to because it's in the middle. So my last grease gun ran out of grease, of course. They only run out of grease when you need grease from them, right? So I took and I've got my battery powered one. All right, that center tower is now greased. The only other thing that I need to do is there is a pivot point back here that has grease fitting on it. I'll grease that. Also, my gauge wheels outside also have grease fittings. I will take and grease those as well. We'll get it put back on the floor and we'll mount it back on the tractor. So the only other thing I'm going to do as I wrap up here, I'm just going to wipe off any residual grease that might be on these fittings. That way when I start this up, I don't have grease flying all over the place. It keeps a little cleaner. And I have a little overflow here on the wheel that I'll take off as well. I'll probably replace these wheels in the springtime, but at least for right now, they're lubricated, they're ready to go. So one last thing that I have a lot of people ask me, when you sharpen your blades, do they need to be razor sharp? And the answer to that is no. Actually, they recommend that the bevel on the blade actually not be sharp enough to cut your finger. So if you want to make them that sharp, that's fine. The minute they hit grass, they're going to dull and round over a bit. But the most important part is just have a good bevel on it that's consistent. And if you want to make them like a razor, that's up to you. You make that choice, but they don't need to be that sharp. Anyway, thank you for being here today with us on All American Tractor Works. If you like what you saw today, please hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.